Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wall of Power TV. I'm your host, Paul Metza. I am very excited to have my good friend, Mr. Gary Hines, in the studio with me all night tonight. Gary is one of the finest musicians in the Twin Cities and director of the Sounds of Blackness, an ensemble he has led since 1971. Sounds of Blackness is a Grammy Award-winning vocal and instrumental ensemble for Minneapolis-St. Paul. They perform music from several genres, including gospel, R&B, soul, and jazz. The group scored several hits on the Billboard R&B chart in Billboard Hot Dance Music Club Play Chart in the 1990s. They have over a dozen recordings out. They've worked with Prince in the studio and on movie soundtracks, and they have a great show coming up on December 23rd at the Fitzgerald Theater, their annual holiday show. And without any further ado, my good friend, Gary Hines. Welcome to Wall of Power TV, Gary. Thank you, brother. I uh, really appreciate you coming in. I know you're a very busy man. Tell us about the genesis of this particular show, where it started. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, Paul, the night before Christmas, the creation of it really, I mean, the great Chet Atkins once said that uh, there are no songwriters, all music is given. And, and I believe right. the spirit of that because this Sounds of Blackness, uh, The Night Before Christmas, just the concept of music what was really a gift from God. I, right. You know, when I first went to as the room. Was Ch as was Chet Atkins. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> One of my yeah. heroes. And uh, yeah, mine too. And uh, when I first brought the concept to the group after, you know, having received this in pouring of music and this crazy concept, and I told them how they were going to turn into live stockings and reindeer, they figured the old man had finally lost it, right? <laughs> so then we needed a home to present it because it was right. like, a, as you know, a big production. Sure. And uh, rest her dear soul, uh, the great Sue McLean, yeah. um, who we both miss dearly. Um, she hadn't even formed Sue McLean Associates yet. Uh, she was still in-house at the Guthrie, because I, I know you guys work together right. as well. Well, Sue and, McLean, let's let the people out there in the uh, TV audience know, was one of the greatest music promoters yes. and supporters yes. in the Twin Cities for as long as mm -hmm. I've been here. In the country, for in that matter. In the country. Yeah. Yeah. In, 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 a, in a woman in a male-dominated field. Absolutely, and she kicked butt doing it. Yeah, yeah. and she, uh, like her... Or, she did, you know, and Sue McLean Associates still do the music at the zoo. Yes. And, and uh, if you get a, a, a VIP pass, it always says Sue McLean, music is good for the soul. Yeah, yeah. So keep telling us about how the show came. Yeah. The got three with Sue. So, yeah, so we have this, this uh, wild production. It's like, okay, it's, it's grand in scale. It's got to be someplace grand. Dare we approach the Guthrie? Wow. Uh, long story short, Paul, um, as I mentioned, uh, Sue is in-house uh, uh, PR for the Guthrie and uh, met with her and all of that. And next thing we know, um, the night before Christmas, a musical fantasy, Sounds of Blackness, is making its debut uh, at the Guthrie. And as, as John Bream once said, the home for the show, and we've been blessed to do it at different uh, venues, and, and then we are now at the Fitzgerald for, for this year, but said that the home of the, uh, the night before Christmas uh, is the Guthrie. And, and the person that, that, that uh, opened up that opportunity, our friend Sue McLean. Wow. So yeah, yeah. We love you. We love you, babe. <laughs> yep, yeah. So, what uh, the show I'm sure has evolved over the years. Yes. So, what can people expect on December 23rd at the Fitzgerald? Like, how many songs, dance routines? Tell us a little. Don't give it all away, but right, give right. us a little, uh, hip us to a little bit what, what people can expect. Well, uh, Paul, this is the 39th annual. Uh, performance of the night before Christmas. Time flies, man. It, isn't that something when you're having <laughs> fun? And, and the basic premise, this, this, let me just explain to all your wonderful uh, viewers and listeners, um, A Visit from St. Nicholas is actually the title of the, the generic uh, reference that everybody says when they say the night, twas the night before right. Christmas went off to the house, written by uh, a Methodist minister, Clement Moore, there in 1822. Yeah, 1822. And so um, this beloved poem, and it was always a favorite of mine, um, what Sounds of Blackness uh, brings to it, we, again, being true to Clement Moore and his vision, like line by line, given the world, people of all backgrounds, an African-American take on it, with, and making it a musical, um, much in the, in the uh, 
framework uh, of like the whiz and right. that kind of thing. So, um, towards the night before Christmas, when all through the house, you, all of that happens. We put that to full dramatic and musical uh, production. And you ask how many songs? There's 30 songs. Wow. I mean, it is a full blown musical production uh, with our, our nine piece band. When you talk about uh, uh, Sounds of Blackness with your Christmas show, the night before Christmas at the Guthrie, it was kind of almost a way, a forerunner for gospel at Colonus, yep. which happened about 10, maybe a little less than 10 years later. Right. With Steels. Yes. And, and that great production. Oh you remember goodness. that show? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Wow. Big yeah. deal. Yes, it is. Tell us how it started. Okay. So I'll try to put this in a nutshell, uh, Paul. McAllister College, speaking of, of birthplaces, yeah. okay, um, my alma mater, McAllister, um, gave birth to Sounds of Blackness, and here's how. Because uh, it's funny, when we interview in like a Chicago or New York, they say, Sounds of Blackness, I get, you know, with, if that was coming out of Chicago or New right, York, you right, know, with right, larger right, black, right. but Minneapolis? <laughs> yeah. how that? So they say, okay, let me tell so, um, you. And St. Paul. Right, yeah, right, you know. the Twin Cities, yeah. yeah. So, um, McAllister College um, embarked on a very ambitious program to recruit students of color. Uh, this was like 1968, 69. Um, it was called EEO, Expanded Educational Opportunities. Well, Paul, one of the uh, offshoots of that effort was that the students themselves formed uh, a number of different organizations. Um, there was a political uh, wing called BLAC, the Black Liberation Affairs Committee. Um, there was a, a theater group called Black Arts Midwest. And there was like this 50-voice uh, choir at the time called the McAllister Black Voices. Wow. Yeah, and so um, fast forward a few years, and uh, in January of 71, um, when yours truly, you know, uh, matriculated and got there, um, they were looking for a director because the director at the time was going to transfer to another campus. Um, and uh, I was asked on, and, and, you know, I was honored because they were even very excellent back then. Right. And, uh, but you know what? Speaking of visions, again, going back to our friend Chet Atkins. Yeah. Uh, the, the vision the good Lord gave me was with this excellent ensemble, to be a cultural ambassador, to, to do the music of the culture for people of all backgrounds. Right. And we needed a name that would fit that, because right. a lot of times people say, what does Sounds of Blackness mean? Right. And it just means every sound of the black experience. Right. So we say that we bring black music to all people with messages of inspiration. Right. So how many uh, members with the band and the choir are going to be there? The full membership of Sounds of Blackness will be there, Paul. And how so, many is that? And grand total for us is 30. That's a 10-piece orchestra and 20 singers. They're all involved in the cast. Um, we even bring in a few outside people. In fact, the gentleman that plays Santa Claus, David Hurst, um, his family, uh, the Hurst family, is they're like the Steels in that right. they're within the family. They're great performers. So... Um, Billy, uh, you know, is my, my band director kind of thing, Billy Steele of right. the Steels. Um, and uh, we've got all of the group involved. And this is a family show, something for everyone from uh, preschool to cool. grandma and grandpa. Yeah. You know, we'll come in. And for people of all backgrounds, you look at, which is what Sounds of Blackness is all about. Like right. I say, we bring the music of the black experience to people of all backgrounds. And, and, and one of the things that we're blessed with is to look out at this show and see the audience looks like a flower garden. Right, you know, right. Kind of and, and everybody's laughing in the spirit, having a great time. America like it should be like it all should. the time. Thank you. Right? Grassroots. All right. In the uh, night before Christmas with uh, my friend Gary Hines and the Sound of the Blackness at the Fitzgerald Theater, December 23rd. We'll have a few messages. Gary will be back for the whole show tonight on Wall of Power TV. There's always something going on at Grumpy's. For happy hour on Monday, it's half price beer and wine. Killer prices on local taps all day, Saturday, and bottles of wine at half price every Sunday. At night, the turntables at Grumpy's stay busy with the Minnesota Music Listening Party on Monday and Vino Vinyl on Thursday night. Trailer Park Trivia packs the house on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And don't miss T-Bone Bingo on Sunday nights. They have it all. Every night of the week, it's Grumpy's Northeast. Welcome back to Wall of Power TV. I'm your host, Paul Metza. Great guest in the studio tonight and an old friend of mine, Gary Hines from Sounds of Blackness. Gary, we really kind of got to know each other about 15 or 20 years ago because we used to work out at the same gym <laughs> on Franklin. Remember that? Yes, sir. But I've been a fan of yours oh, for since I moved to town. Uh, and all you. the work that the Sounds of Blackness did. That, that's mutual, but thank you. You know, 
I think uh, you had a very close personal relationship as a friend and also as a working artist with Prince Rogers Nelson. Yes, sir. Can you tell us when that started? Because I know you guys go way back. Way back. Well, yes, I can and, and gladly will, my friend. So, press rewind back to uh, my high school, mighty Minneapolis Central. So senior year at Central, uh, these rumors started to circulate, you know, about this kid down at Bryant Junior High School, which okay. was literally just a few blocks away, that was a beast on every instrument. Right. And I was like, what is this? Okay. And I was hearing about this. Okay. Fast forward a couple of years later, and, you know, of course now it's the foundation of the group with Grand Central. And right. I mean, going back to the original days. Jimmy Jam um, and Terry Jimmy Jam, yep. Yeah, okay. And, and, and Dez and, I mean, yeah. All, yeah, all the original guys. Um, playing together and appearing at some, at some of the same events, um, whether it was the Northside Picnic Festival, it was a call, um, playing out in the streets, you know. Sounds would usually open the event, and they've had three or four bands, and of course, you know, Prince would close it. Right. Um, countless events like that. Uh, the annual Miss Black Minnesota pageant. I mean, there were just so many things in the community uh, around at some of the clubs. Right. Um, now, we'll date ourselves saying some of these names. Sure. The, the Nakarima. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Cozy. Well, and I've the, heard of all those clubs yeah. from my buddy <laughs> Willie Walker. Oh, yeah. Willie would, yeah. yeah. Willie was playing those as yeah. well. And, uh, you know, on and on and on. Uh, the Riverview. And, and so, in so many instances, um, both uh, musical and community, and then a lot of, uh, maybe some of your listeners uh, don't know, um, that uh, Prince was a great athlete. Um, and at a really um, sports schools, uh, Bryant Junior High and Minneapolis Central, uh, he was like all city basketball, wow. you know, despite his height kind of thing. So um, all of that talent, yeah, you know, he rap- must have been. I mean, <laughs> he was. I mean, as an as an adult, he was what five two, five three, five four. Right. And as a kid, probably barely hitting five feet, playing basketball. Yeah. And kicking butt. Yeah, and kicking butt and and, and <laughs> taking names. Yes. Yeah, so uh, all of that was going on. So the relationship goes all the way back to all of those things and continued up. And you know what? As I know, you know, Paul. Um, when he uh, evolved into the international icon that he did, uh, he never, ever, ever forgot this community. And, and even from day one uh, of his um, national uh, debut and all that kind of thing, uh, as I know you also know, L.A. was trying to get him to move there. Oh, yeah. And he told them from day one. And, you know, when we would talk, he would say, that's never going to happen. Right. They're coming here. Right. And so even before Paisley was built, right. he had that image in his mind right. that, you know, when I get some, they're going to come here. And that's what they did. Right. They being whoever was going to work with him, right. you know, was coming to Minnesota. But he was not going to L.A. Right. You know? um, and so just he loved Minnesota, uh, loved the Twin Cities, as I know you know. And uh, just many uh, countless conversations at all hours of the morning. Well, uh, tell you, yeah. say, before we started taping tonight, yeah. you were telling me about how you'd get a call at 3 in the morning. Ta- ta- talk about that. That was so cool. And, okay. So, uh, you know, Prince, like we all do, had, had some quirks about him. So one was, and it was really funny, and, and he was actually quite a, a funny guy, too. Um, despite how long we knew each other, he would still say your full name. Right. So call, you know, two or three in the morning, phone ring. Not are you awake or is this a bad time? Just Gary Hines. How are you, how are you Gary Hines? <laughs> and so, oh, hey, how you doing? I, I would usually call him Maestro. Said, how right. you doing, Maestro? Uh, I have this idea for, for Sounds of Blackness, Gary Hines. And say, so, it's okay, man. And tell me. So, and, so these comments, they would just happen. So it got to the point where the phone rings at two or three in the morning. It's probably him. He's probably got some it's musical maestro. idea. Got it, the maestro. And, uh, you know, our, our conversations, uh, we talk about a lot about, about God and religion. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, about music, uh, sports. You know, he was a huge Viking and a huge sports fan. Uh, and talk about beautiful women. Uh, right. Not necessarily in that order. So. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. So when did you actually now uh, st- record with him? Uh, for the first time, and then tell us a little bit about you worked with him on the Batman movie on that soundtrack. Right. Okay. I, certainly. And and uh, actually, um, Batman uh, was the first time actually at Paisley recording. I mean, like doing a full blown out. And and it, it's great that you asked that, Paul, because at the time, <laughs> a couple of funny quick things about sure. that. Um, I, I got a, a two or three o'clock call in the morning kind of thing. Um, 
Gary Hines says, sometime want uh, Sounds of Blackness record with me. And I thought, oh, great, Maestro, thank you. Um, can you? And I'll never forget, it was a Halloween, and I'll, I'll think of the year in just sure. a minute. It, well, the session was going to be on Halloween kind of thing. And I, I, you know, later in the day, you know, got in touch with the group, said we're going to Paisley, we're excited, we're going to... And this was for the Batman project? You know, but, I'm glad okay. you say that, because okay. that reminds me to say, um, and because I, I asked him, I said, hey, man, what's the name of the song? He said, um, I can't tell you what it is, it's top secret. So, we at the time didn't know. I mean, everything about Batman was under wraps. Right. We didn't know that it was for the movie, right. uh, what the song title was, whatever kind of thing. So it's we, cool we, you were going to record on Halloween, though. I, I like, did, you know. <laughs> I mean, he he was Batman. Yeah, you know, right, right, exactly. You know, yeah. Even though you know that that's kind of David the Island's the night, nickname. The bat, you know, the bat, uh, <laughs> you know, image in the in the in the clouds. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah. So and uh, he says, yes, I will we'll, only need a, a couple hours. Of course, we were there all night. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, right, the, you right, know, right, that how right. that goes. So. Everybody canceled all their Halloween plans. All kind of, and what, it went so well, we did the, the first song, and then we did a second one as well. And, and, uh, um, but we still didn't know. It was kind of a mystery. And there, there was all these people standing around. Found out later, of course, these were like, you know, studio films. Right, was like, right. what's going on? Kind of, it wasn't an ominous thing. It was just kind of exciting. Right. And then finally, I think like a month later, he could tell me what it was for and all that right mm. before the release. But, yeah, that was uh, a magical session. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to go hang out, like go to the uh, Timberwolves game with them or just do social stuff like that? <laughs> Answer is a, is a big, huge yes. In fact, um, speaking of the night before Christmas, uh, Prince, God bless him, uh, he, would, he would come to Sounds of Blackness shows all the time and he loved the night before Christmas. And, but what he would do, just, just, you know, just that sensitivity, he would go up in, in the uh, lighting booth right? And rather than to disrupt, sure. you know, by being in the crowd. But then, of course, word would filter backstage. We're about to go on. Yep. Prince is here. Prince is here. Come right, right, right. My guest in the studio for the whole night tonight, the leader of the Sounds of Blackness, Mr. Gary Hines. They have a great show coming up the night before Christmas, their annual Christmas show at the Fitzgerald Theater, December 23rd. Show starts at 8 p.m. You can get tickets at the Fitzgerald box office or go to SueMcLeanPresents.com and get it. Gary, so you've, uh, you're working all the time with the sounds, and yes. you've got 30 people. I mean, that's, somebody's got to be making those phone calls for you, I hope. <laughs> I hope you're not calling everybody to tell them what time the rehearsal is. Uh, I know as a, having a quintet how tough that could be. Yeah. But um, you have won three Grammy Awards and other awards, Black Spirit Awards, but tell us about what was it like the first time you got the Grammy. Where were you, what, and what was it for? Um, very, very special, very humbling, uh, Brother Paul. Um, we were at uh, Radio City in New York, because that was back in the day when they would alternate East and West right. Coast from year to year the, for where the Grammy uh, would take place. Um, and they, of course, just recently uh, announced the Grammy nominees, so yes. perfect timing to hear this story. Gary. Yeah, yeah. So here we are in Radio City, um, and... Um, we were awaiting, we had, you know, new outfits that were coming because we actually were on the road uh, with the late, great Luther Vandross, you know, oh, doing really? the tour with him. And we... Were you, you were uh, opening up for Luther? We were, yeah. Did you, did, you get, did, did you get a chance to actually perform with him as we well? We did. We did the grand finale with him. Wow. You know, talking about people, yeah, and just a, a great human being. Ano um, and another great artist yeah, we, we miss. Yeah. So we're all in New York, um, just staying a few blocks away from Radio City. Um, John Bream is with us. Shout okay. out to him because he's covering, you know, and everybody's all excited and all of that. And uh, we're awaiting our outfits, you know. That's a, the day, I mean, everything was going wrong kind of right, thing. Right, right, you know, Other than sure. the fact that we had been nominated. Yeah. The, are the outfits going to get here in time? We've got to go over the, you know, I have to go over early and all right, that kind of right, thing. So, right, uh, And, of course, yeah. it's in New York with enough pressure as it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, my God. Just crossing I mean, the street. Crossing the street. And yeah. even in the <laughs> lobby, of Paul, you literally I mean, could not turn without a microphone in your face right. and somebody kind of, so um, it was that kind of atmosphere. So then our category comes up. You and, know, and the I'm, category was what? Um, uh, let's see, for the first one was um, best uh, gospel album by a choir or chorus. Okay. I think it was, it was the full title kind of thing um, for Evolution of Gospel. Our first major, shout out to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis yeah. and Flight Time Productions, my God. Um, so they call our name, and of course we go nuts, and uh, yeah. and uh, you know we're on the stage, and I, I, Did you I still all don't remember. Go up all we all we oh, I nice. I told the group I said you know if we win, it's a group said, we're all go Thank you. You know that that does not record say 
Gary Hines, it says Sounds of Blackness, right. you know. So we all are up on stage kind of thing and, you know, trying to settle down. Everybody's screaming and crying. I, I still to this day, John Breen remembers what I said, right. but I don't remember what I said. Wow. He, he's a good friend. What do you think it is about the Twin Cities that, that gives us such a powerful music scene in all genres? Mm -hmm. We, uh, when we moved to, to Minneapolis, and we can talk about that uh, in a minute as well, um, you know, there was, there was this really active music scene. And I think just to answer your question, I, I wish we had more time to expand on it, but um, with such a small African-American population, one of two things can happen. Either you get totally assimilated and your, your culture gets totally watered down, or you really, it becomes concentrated mm -hmm. and then expands. And I think the latter is what happened okay. because both in the areas of, of, of blues, of jazz, gospel, and R&B, it was just thriving here, even with this, this small percentage of African-American population. Right. You know? And then I think that same principle, in a different way, worked for genres outside, you know, uh, with our white counterparts. There were these places to play and develop, right. um, which I don't know that it's the same now. Right. Probably not kind of right. thing. So, so venues, you know, to, to um, nurture and bring you along kind of thing. Right. You know, so, um, you know, the hats off to the Twin Cities for, for that. Talk about that, the importance of music mm -hmm. to the cultural, um, the, you know, the, the, the cultural depth of this country and what it's meant for the last 250 years. Uh, the great Stevie Wonder says, uh, rightfully so, that music is the universal language, um, and, and it truly is. Um, transcends uh, all the, the geographical and, and, and uh, cultural gradients that we try to put on it and that the industry even sometimes tries to put mm -hmm. on it. Um, the music uh, is about spirit and humanity, which transcends and, and, and eradicates, makes all those uh, walls and barriers go away. Um, mentors uh, at the top of the list, uh, favorite artists, uh, I, of course, would have to be the godfather of soul, James Brown. Right. You know, uh, uh, the great Duke Ellington. Right. Um, it, it, those answers uh, frequently, now you, you know me well enough to not be surprised, but sometimes when I do other interviews and those names come up, people are surprised. They expect me to say maybe a gospel name or this kind of thing. Right. And, and not that they're not there, but, but Duke Ellington was really our template for Sounds of Blackness because people think of Duke and they think of jazz, and they should. Right. But as I know you know, uh, and when you listen to some of Duke's interviews, he said, I do the, when the people would say, you're a jazz musician, he would say, I'm a musician, and I do the music of my people. So Duke did spirituals, right. he did gospel, right. he did blues right. and jazz. So that's, that laid that template for Sounds of Black. It's really a cultural um, band. I just read a great uh, Duke <laughs> Ellington uh, uh, remark he said when he's feeling down, he mm -hmm. says he doesn't sit around and complain. He goes to the piano and plays some blues. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. his thing, Well, you know? as B.B. King you know, would say, the blues is what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. So... So um, that's why Duke Ellington, I mean, obviously, you know, just, just one of the greatest composers in the history of the planet, but um, just having that perspective of doing that, Duke recorded four sacred albums, right. you know, I, I, again, I know you know, um, but which surprises a lot of people who don't know, with, with, with anthems and hymns and gospel and a cappella spirituals, right. you know, it's like, but with, with his jazz renditions and all of that. So anyway, the, the template for Sounds of Blackness is really not new. Right. You know, we, we had the great Duke, and then later, Earth, Wind, and Fire, who did not only, obviously, you know, the jazz influence, R&B, and soul, but also did gospel and, and inspiration and all that kind of stuff, so. You have a very <laughs> pow powerful new tune. We're going to watch the video and listen to it. Tell us in 30 seconds about Black Lives Matter, the song we're going to uh, witness. Yes, sir. One of the things I love about you, brother, is that, you know, you are... Um, a troubadour and the vanguard of, of the movement for, for social justice for, for, yeah, yeah. And, and music has always been in the vanguard of every movement, you know, civil rights, women's rights, and so And so when uh, we saw the Black Lives Matter movement and, and we reached out to the national office, we said, you know, you guys should have an anthem and Sounds of Blackness would be honored to wow. provide it.
there's got to be, I'm guessing, a real support system within sounds yeah. to have what you, everybody in your band, in your group has each other's back. Absolutely, my friend. You know, um, when I was blessed to be, and this is related to the answer to your question, Paul, to this question, uh, when I was blessed to be on the, the production staff with, with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for Flight Time, um, I one time asked them, you know, so what's your criteria, you know, for deciding who you're going to work with? Because they right. get offers from, you know, everybody. And they said, you know what, uh, Doc, that was their nickname for me. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, it was Terry that said it, Terry Lewis. He said, Doc, we know that people are talented. That's not, he said, we look for good hearts. Hmm. For people, you know, and so that so circle back to sounds of blackness. Yes, we that's audition. That's a great. That's a great yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah, Jerry. great. Yeah, because, like you say, it's ultimately a family affair. Right. So, yeah, there's obviously got to be a level of talent and musicianship and sure. vocal and all kind of thing there to make it happen. But if the chemistry is not not right, if you're not on one accord, as they would say in church, kind of thing. I mean, we got enough to, a sense to know that uh, anything we do is just by the grace of God, kind of thing. Gary, this has been an honor and a pleasure, and it's. Always fun to see you, my man. Thank you so much, brother. Okay. Up yeah. for an onward. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Wall of Power TV. I hope you're enjoying uh, the, uh, the holiday season. And uh, stick around next week. We'll save you a seat. Thank you very much.